My name is Evan Billiter, local Huntsvillian. You want to get on the internet, see some good stuff? My boy Joe, he's rocking it out, drinking beer, having fun. My man Tom, he's doing it just right. You need to know about Huntsville? Go to knowhuntsville.com right now. <laughs> this episode of No Huntsville is brought to you by Highbrow Cold Brew. Uh, this is Tom. And I'm Joe. And this is No Huntsville, a, another special episode of art with uh, photographer Cecil Holmes and Cecil Holmes Photography. Catch him at cecilsphotos.com, also on facebook.com forward slash cecilsphotos. Cecil, thanks for coming and talking to us today. Thanks for having me. All right, so let's uh, talk about what you do here in town. You've been a photographer in a couple of years, self-taught, award-winning, apparently, uh, a photographer here in town. And your main thing is you put on a lot of clinics and you get people involved in photography that way. And um, also, uh, you um, well, you have tutorials and stuff on your website, and you do a blog. So talk a little bit about what you do, what type of photography you take, and some of the clinics you're putting together. Uh, most of the stuff, most of the stuff I do is landscape mm -hmm. type stuff. Do a lot of waterfalls and just um, grand landscape type photography. Do a lot of HDR right. photography. Okay. Uh, if you don't know what that is, if you have an iPhone, you probably know by now. Okay. And. Uh, and you know it's a lot of uh, pretty much shoot anything but people. I don't really like the you don't like people. <laughs> so uh, yeah, it's not good to shoot people, <laughs> especially kids. You don't yes. want to shoot kids. Right. So you do a, you do a kind of an annual trip out to a couple of different places, but the Tetons has been your thing for the last couple of years. And so talk to me about those trips that you go out there and take the, the, those those pictures. Yeah, well, what we do is we'll just take a group of, depending upon if I go by myself or I have another instructor help out, we'll take, you know, eight to 12 people out with us. Um, we'll just basically hit all the iconic locations out in that area, and nice. there's a few spots that, you know, only we have access to. That, wow. Oh, okay. So, uh, um, basically just take them there, drag them out of bed early, you know, <laughs> get there, watch the sunrise, and go over any kind of questions they have about camera settings or exposure or any kind of things like that nice and then uh, depending upon how much time we have we may do classroom based kind of uh, sessions on post work and stuff like that photoshop and lightroom and that kind of thing so um uh, i'm going to come back to what you said earlier about hdr shots so some of my favorite photography that you do and i've, I've actually hired you on different uh, projects to help me out with certain things but some of my favorite stuff that you've worked with is the HDR shots. So tell everybody out there what an HDR shot is and then uh, kind of go into depth about you know, what makes those type of shots really compelling. Sure, HDR actually stands for High Dynamic Range Photography. Okay. So basically it's a, it's a tool that got started in video from what I'm told. Okay. But basically yeah, there's a lot of science behind it. But basically, your camera can only see a certain amount of range of light. So, okay. Okay. Uh, like if you, when you walk into a room and there's a lot of light coming in from windows and the room's kind of dark, your eyes can adjust for that and be able to see out the windows and see things in the room. The way your camera works is, especially in the past, you had to make a choice and say, okay, if I take this picture, do I want you to be able to see the stuff out of the windows? Okay. or see the stuff inside the room because my camera can't do both. Okay. So basically what, what you do now with HDR is you take a series of shots that, you know, you'll take shots that will expose for the details in the room, right. then the details outside the room, and then in software you put those together so you can see everything like you would with your eye. So you, you get a very, and we're going to be putting images like the HDR shots up while we're talking right now, but what you're seeing is a very, real, just a lot of detail that you would normally not see in a, in a, in a photograph that yeah. you get from these type of using to these different, it's different exposures, right, that you're using? Yeah, what you'll do is you'll you'll take a series of shots, three, five, however many. You usually need a tripod because you need the same image oh, yeah. every time. Oh yeah. Right. Yeah, it's, uh, you can get away with some handheld stuff, but if you're doing like a, a, a wide range where it's really dark and really bright, you're yeah. gonna have to have a tripod. Okay. Because a lot of your exposures are gonna be several seconds long, and you just oh, right. yeah. you just can't handhold something like that. But sure. Yeah, it's a. Uh, I have a lot of fun with it. Right. And. Uh, yeah. What what you see what you really notice in HDR shots is the vivid color that you get from them too, right? So you can tell right off the bat your the, the shots that you take that the vividness of that color is really there. It's like a saturation of that color. 
Yeah, and a lot of that comes from just, you know, instead of taking one single shot, you stack those multiple shots together and you just have a lot more data to work with. Oh, okay, right. Yeah. So you can pull a lot more data out of... And it seems not only for the color um, but and, and, and for the, the clarity of them, but you get a lot of texture out of them. Like you see, like you almost can touch the photo yes. and it looks like... Yes. like some of you are like rusty cars. You almost feel like you could touch some of the rust on those images, which right is really there. cool. But, well, some of that stuff works better for HDR. You know, rust and HDR go together. That's like, yeah, really they're, well, like yeah. they're like buddies. <laughs> <laughs> yeah. yeah, they're best buddies. <laughs> right. They go drinking together. <laughs> <laughs> all right. So let's also talk about, I know you, you, you've you been going all over the place taking pictures. You're, you're meeting other photographers. You're putting on these clinics together. So what are some of the most memorable shots that you've been on that you want to talk about? Um, you know, they all are... Special in their own way. Sure, yeah. That's a good generic answer. answer right? <laughs> yeah. You know, I, you know, really, I like going to the Tetons. We go every year. I think uh, probably one of my favorite national parks to shoot in is probably the Smokies, just because it feels like our backyard. Yeah, right, yeah. You know, three-hour yeah. drive up. I've done things like get up, drive up there, take sunrise pictures, and turn around and come back Come back, home. yeah. <laughs> wow, right. And so, um, yeah. So uh, your 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 website. You have the you have the blog there. You're also putting on these uh, clinics. So if uh, anybody's out there looking to get into photography here locally, and that's what we try to do is help people out that are doing local stuff. Is there any groups or anything any any uh, uh, communities that people should get involved in here in Huntsville if they want to start taking pictures? Sure. There's a uh, there's actually a group called the Huntsville Photographic Society. All right. We can put um, their website up on when we're talking here too. They meet. Um, I'm not real active in the club, so I don't know for sure, but they. Meet meet twice a month at the library okay and then they have uh, usually one of those meetings a month is some kind of instructional they'll have some guy come in and talk about different topics and then the other meeting is where they have like these competitions and oh, okay so you can the way it works in a nutshell is you you know you have these competitions within the club and then everybody earns a certain amount of points for placing and then at the end of the year they have like a photographer of the year award. oh really okay wow. That's so <clears throat> there's another group in town called the they call themselves the north alabama photographers guild okay yeah it was a group that kind of started on Flickr. Um, a bunch of people just started getting together and hanging out and they're not near as structured it's basically hey let's get together and eat pizza and drink beer and we'll talk about camera stuff right so <laughs> uh, they usually get together a lot more than than like well the there's HBO more enticing stuff. reasons it seems like yeah, to get together for that group. i can think of two <laughs> <laughs> the, the um your teton trip how do people go about registering for that and it's probably a little too late to do it now. Because we're doing it what? next month, right? Yeah, this year we've changed it up a bit, so we're going next month. Usually we go in the fall, okay. so September. But um, you can see all the workshops I have or offer on my website. Oh, okay. <laughs> so you can sign up and register there. In fact, there's only a few listed now. We'll probably do add some more localized things. And when I say localized, we made. Uh, I'm thinking about throwing a... Uh, waterfall workshop in in the fall for maybe southern Tennessee nice. yeah yeah and then we may it's not totally local but may do an old car city thing which is just north of Atlanta uh, it's about a two and a half hour drive from here so mm -hmm. it's we may throw that on there and you're thinking about some other waterfall possibilities I just finished up a few weeks ago we did a waterfall workshop in Bankhead National Forest oh nice so those uh those workshops are always great. They require a little bit more walking than a lot of the other workshops. So, <clears throat> but if you can get past the mile or two walk in, then it's always, right. <laughs> it's always a good, good, good time when you get there. I want to talk about one more thing. I'm, I'm showing the picture on screen right now. Um, this is this is in Alabama, correct? It is. So I want to talk about this shoot because I thought this is one of my the most interesting. Is ones this that, the big fish thing? Yeah. yeah. So <laughs> I was going to ask you about it. So give a background of what this is, where this is at, and then I'm going to show these images on screen. They're, they're just beautiful images, but talk yeah. about this, this shoot right here. Well, that particular shot um, was, was, is, I don't know if it's still there. Okay. Uh, was the movie set for the movie Big Fish. Right. Um, shot here in Alabama. It, right. It's on an island on the Alabama River near Prattville. Okay. Um, Basically, the way they've got it set up now is there's a gate up front, so you've got a little honor box where you, they want you to pay three bucks or whatever. And then, okay. you, then you can walk around the gate, and I think it's set up as like a fishing club or something now, so people go there and launch their boats. But if you walk, it's a half-mile walk from the gate. The whole movie set's still there. It's 
really bad, dilapidated shape. Right. But that that image you're looking at now is from maybe four or five years ago. Now I wonder what shape it's in now. (laughs) Well, I've been back a few times. Okay. And the last time I was there was maybe a couple of years ago. Okay. And, uh, you know, we are all good law-abiding citizens. Right. So we put our money in the honor box and we're going out and we're taking pictures. This guy comes barreling up in a Ford Ranger, like sliding sideways and stuff. Wow. So he's like, "Uh, what are you guys doing out here? You know, he's all upset because we're there and he's like, well, this is private property. So... You know, with my southern charm, I was able to talk him down a little. <clears throat> All right. And but he was telling a story about how they were thinking about just bulldozing the place because they had a lot of theft and oh, okay. oh. he was constantly having to monitor the property for people sneaking in and stealing stuff. So was it his land? I think he was managing it for some elderly lady. Okay. But so basically, the the movie the came through. They built this set, then they left it, and then they didn't. Bull, like they didn't bulldoze it down, they kept it. And it looks like an old what '50s sort of uh, street where they filmed the film. But then they left. They didn't. They haven't kept it up. So now it's kind of falling apart. But that's what can kind of give it that unique look. Oh yeah. And then you yeah. do the HDR shots on top. It just it's just amazing. Yeah, these are amazing. Yeah, and when you there. look at the, I mean, when you're there, the buildings are just like plywood, and the brick is just some kind of rubber brick they glued to the plywood. Oh, <laughs> so it's all just a facade. <laughs> right. <yeah. laughs> that's neat. Yeah, it's pretty cool. Where um, can people buy your prints or anything? Um, I really don't sell a lot. I mean, if you want to buy one, we can talk for sure. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> yeah. Um, I sell a lot of stock photography, mm-hmm. and mostly, you know, most of the income That's generated cool. by workshops and things like that. Okay. Yeah. All right, Cecil. Um, man, I really appreciate you coming in today. That's Cecil's uh, photography, Cecil'sPhotos.com, also on Facebook, uh, Facebook.com forward slash Cecil's Photos. Um, check him out. See his blog. He's, he's posting new stuff on there. He's going to have some tutorials coming out with some post work and uh, post photo work, and also some uh, you know photo settings and stuff like that. Uh, just an amazing photographer. I'm so glad you came in. Thank you so much, yeah, Cecil, for coming these in. These things are amazing. These yeah. pictures are awesome. <laughs> Thank you. Guys. Oh, and then also we've been drinking highbrow uh, coffee today, <laughs> yeah. so we need to mention yeah. that. So thanks to highbrow. All right. Thank you. <laughs>